Hi everyone, it is right at 11 o'clock here in San Francisco. In an effort to keep this webinar running on time and get all of you back to your days as quickly as possible, we are gonna get started with the content in just a few minutes. However, while we're waiting for everybody else to join the call and get their screens ready, we are gonna just give you a high level overview, an introduction to Blue Dot Innovation, sort of set the stage for why we're having this conversation, what location is what location issues we're going to address throughout this presentation, and give you a bit of background on Blue Dot. So my name is Jordan Long. I run Partnerships and Strategic Development at Blue Dot Innovation. For those of you who may not be super aware of Blue Dot or what we do, we are a location services platform. We specialize in hyper-precise location services, including GeoFence and our proprietary tech, a GeoLine. And we are the only location services platform that Salesforce Marketing Cloud trusts to power location-based engagement in their journey builder and audience builder application. Blue Dot has been a Salesforce ISV partner for about eight months now, but our product has just become live on the App Exchange in the past couple of months. So as this relationship is just starting out, we wanted to take a few minutes to tell everybody who's using Salesforce Marketing Cloud how you can really use location to get even deeper engagement throughout the platform. For those of you who have joined and aren't using Salesforce Marketing Cloud or Blue Dot, don't worry, there will be plenty of content for you. This conversation isn't meant to be a sales call to talk about Salesforce Marketing Cloud's capabilities or Blue Dot's capabilities, though of course we they will come up. The purpose of this call is to really introduce you to the location services space, to give you some best practices for how to engage, and to talk you through what you should be considering when you're considering your location-based engagement for 2017. So it's about five minutes past now, and I will go ahead and get started with the meat of the conversation. I do have everybody muted, but feel free to shoot a question into the chat bar at any time, and we'll be happy to address anything that may come up as we're walking through this content. There will also be a Q&A session at the end, so feel free to either ask while we're going through or hold your questions to the end. Right, so you all know the title of this conversation is The Power of Location in Personalizing the Customer Journey. What we're going to be talking about today are three things. I'm sure some of you are quite familiar with what's going on in the location space, but for most of us, location is something that's come onto the radar in the past three or four years and has really come into its own. So we're going to start this conversation by discussing the where factor. That is, why does location matter? What has happened in the past few years in the location space? And what do we have to look forward to in 2017? During that conversation, we're really going to set the stage for the assumption that no one in marketing or customer engagement can really afford to go forward without considering a location-based engagement strategy. But since it is still a relatively new space, there's a lot of confusion and a lot of noise out there about how to engage around location, what types of solution are necessary, and how to get the best conversions and return on your investment. So in the location rules of engagement section of this conversation, I'm going to walk you through what Blue Dot considers the five best practices to optimize your location-based marketing strategy, and then give you some tools and points you should be considering when you are selecting that location service that's going to power that engagement for you. Naturally, we We'll be focusing on Blue Dot software only solution when we're talking about some differences. But what I want to give you in this section are some tools that allow you to cut through the noise to consider all solutions far beyond just the solution that Blue Dot offers and really be able to determine what matters when you're considering a location solution and what you absolutely have to have to guarantee that you're going to get the results that location can truly deliver. And then we'll round out the conversation with a where to go section. So in this part, we'll just give you some heads up on where you should be looking to get great information on location-based marketing and, of course, where you can turn if you'd like more information on Blue Dot software-only solution or if you'd like more information on how Blue Dot can be used to maximize the Salesforce Marketing Cloud and Journey Builder experience. So in 2016 and 2017, we're going to be talking about, excuse me, in 2016, it stopped being about the wow factor, those moments of mobile truth with your customer engagement, and really became about the where factor. 2016 is really the year that put location-based marketing on the map. It had been at the forefront of some marketers' minds in some niche verticals, particularly retail. But in 2016, we saw it become a dominant national trend, an interest in location. And of course, you know, the one thing we can look to to just 
act as proof of that is, of course, the phenomenon of Pokemon Go. Simply put, it was a global phenomenon in 2016, and Pokemon Go hysteria brought location and augmented reality into the mainstream. But it also spurred discussion among retailers, brand, and marketers about how to use location-aware nature of that game to cash in on the back of its success. Marketers had been using location-based uh, content for delivering in-game apps, to delivering in-app message or in-app advertising, in-app messaging. But this game and the way in which it spoke to a new comfort that consumers have with sharing their location in real time really launched the conversation on what is really possible with location services. And from the beginning of that game's launch up till the close of this year, we saw some really powerful trends come to play. So in 2016, up from 42% in 2015, 62% of brand marketers invested in location-based marketing research or strategies. This means more brands than not were, for the first time, considering what location could really do in their marketing strategies, from mobile advertising to out-of-home content, really looking at the way they could use location to get more valuable insights on their consumer. 2016 really also put the sort of the nail in the coffin with the customer debate on comfort around sharing their location and customer privacy. In 2016, we saw 75% of mobile users report that they were comfortable sharing their precise location data as long as they felt they were getting something in return for it. This concept of the data value exchange is going to be very crucial to unlocking a really powerful customer journey and making sure that you're using location in the best way possible. We'll talk a little bit more about it throughout this conversation, but it's worth noting that this is really one of the key paradigm shifts that occurred in 2016 that is allowing new use cases within mobile location services to be possible. 98% of that same group surveyed stated they would share their hyper precise location for cash base incentives. Those are those are going to include things like loyalty programs and mobile offers, which is a huge, huge step in the right uh, direction for retailers, brands, fast food, hospitality to all be able to engage with their customers when and where it matters and know that their customers aren't getting irritated with it. In fact, that their customers view it as a part of customer service. One of the other astonishing facts that we saw come out of 2016 was the result of $40 billion of retail being triggered by local searches. Is What that means is that this year, in 2016, when a person would search for a particular product or item on their mobile device, we can calculate and attribute that search to $40 billion in sales. Another interesting fact that comes out of this same study is the fact that of those $40 billion worth of purchase that were made on the back of a local mobile search, about 42% of those were made within one hour after the search was conducted, which for all of you that work for retailers or in that mobile advertising space, I'm sure you are paying quite attention, quite a lot of attention now as that is a very astonishing fact that speaks to how quickly you can get your users' att attention when you are using location-based engagement to actually engage with them where it matters. So 2016 was a huge year. It let marketers recognize that mobile has created a major shift in how people behave and the resulting opportunities for brands to reach and engage them. Along with this mobile-driven shift in behavior has come that shift in expectations. And in 2017, through 2020, this market is going to absolutely take off and it's going to be contingent upon conducting yourselves as a location-based marketers in a way that suits and aligns with your customer expectations on the value they want to get from sharing that hyper-precise location data with you. So, of course, due to the rapidly evolving nature of mobile technology, its impact on people's behavior and expectations, it can be really hard for marketers to keep up with how to best leverage mobile as a whole, let alone mobile location, as a part of an overarching marketing strategy. But if anything that we know from 2016, 2017 is the year you really have to pay attention to location. So this is just a page that's going to run through some major facts. I'm not going to sit here and read them off to you, but I would really encourage you after this call when you're reviewing this deck to take a look at these statistics. These are things like apps account for 80% of all mobile media time. 85% of people feel that their mobile devices are a central part of their everyday lives, and 72% consider them an extension of themselves. 
88% of consumers who conduct a local search on a mobile device go to that business within 24 hours. These are major, major trends that marketers cannot afford to not take note of. And these are the same factoids that are driving the industry towards rapid growth over the next three years. So why so much growth? Where are these statistics coming from? What is allowing this to happen and why now? So two things. One, it does go back to that cultural shift. Today's consumers are very, very inundated with tons of messages, tons of options. There are a million things they can get when they just have one need. So this growth in this market speaks to a changing customer paradigm of looking to be engaged at the right moment at the right time. Technological innovations like Blue Dot Innovation combined with these changing market dynamics, users' comfort with sharing their locations, and they're creating an environment where location data is fueling innovation and opportunity. And of course, this changing paradigm, though, it really wouldn't mean anything if we hadn't used uh, if we hadn't used the past couple of years to really innovate from the technological perspective in the location space, new technology always is going to be greater than old obstacles around customer engagement. So before 2016 and before a service like Blue Dot came onto the market, companies were really, really limited in what they could do with location, particularly around mobile. So for those of you who aren't aware, um, Blue Dot actually solves a very unique problem problem that limited the location space and that is the trade-off between privacy or excuse me between battery life and accuracy so for those of you um who are familiar a little bit with location apologize for the baseness of this analogy but anybody's used uh google maps location services to do turn by turn navigation we all know it will get you exactly where you need to go when you need to go there but it will also drain your battery within two hours. Of course, marketers would have for years loved to get their hands on that type of hyper-precise location data to know where their customers are going at all times, but it doesn't really do you any good to know where your customers are if you irritate your customer by draining their battery and they delete your application or stop engaging with you. So what, co what companies were doing were just scaling back on that accuracy level. So this is where you get this concept of these really large geofences. So think something like gimbals, location services, or native services that you'll get on Apple or uh, Android uh, platforms. So these are 120 meter fences, and this is pretty much best case scenario. It's not just, you know, a large number that we're showing out for demonstrated purposes. 120 meters is actually the best that these, these services can do in terms of drawing that geofence. And 120 meters, to put it into some context for you guys, is 8 to 12 city blocks. So that's a huge radius. What you're essentially doing there is casting a giant net and just sort of hoping for the best. You're hoping that you don't disengage consumers who are getting content that's not relevant to them, and you're hoping that you're getting consumers that are in that area for that specific reason, but you're not really able to tell because you don't have any granular level location data. But what could you do? Because your customer was going to delete the app if you drained their battery. So this was really where, you know, marketers were thinking, what's the use? This, this location data doesn't really give me anything. So where Blue Dot has come into this space is by offering this hyper accurate outdoor location service that delivers GPS level accuracy with negligible battery drain. We also have um, hard-coded privacy into our technology, and we've produced a solution that is software only, one of the other major uh, inhibitors to unlocking location, particularly in the outdoor engagement space, is the requirement that uh, you need to have beacons to get this level of accuracy. Beacons are costly and require tons of maintenance, and a lot of times in outdoor spaces, you don't even have the right to install beacons. So it's another major limitation. Of course, beacons are still a relevant and meaningful part of the location services conversation conversation. However, they really only need to be an indoor solution when you're in a position where you're somewhere where GPS and cell tower can't penetrate the infrastructure of a building. Anywhere else, uh, 2016 saw the adoption of solutions like Blue Dot that can power these use cases without draining the battery and without making the cost benefit uh, disadvantageous to the user. So Blue Dot has been a particularly innovative technology in this space, and the reason for that is Blue Dot software-only solution doesn't require any hardware. We replace beacons in 80% of use cases, and the reason we do that is we are a company that started with heavy R&D for two years, 
Um, there's a saying among product marketers that if your product was ready to go to market, then you waited too long to get it to market. Well, Blue Dot definitely waited too long to get it to market because our product has addressed really every major concern that you can think of when you're thinking about what you might need to overcome to engage with your customers in that mobile space. So unlike uh, technologies like Gimbal's uh, geofencing or Foursquare's location services, which is a data play, BlueNets is a real-time location services platform, and our technology differs from anything else out there because we use GPS, cell tower, and Wi-Fi to form a base layer of triangulation. But then our IP is actually a series of algorithms that go deep within the phone and change the way individual chipsets react with and interact with one another. So accelerometer, gyroscope, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, barometer, you name it, we're using it within the phone. And what that lets us do is filter inputs more effectively than anybody else, so we're able to get a more accurate location without draining the battery life. And to be very frank, good science like this is what's going to deliver great campaigns. Having accuracy at this level to be able to get very, very granular without disengaging your consumers. Uh, it's technologies like ours that have really unlocked what's possible in location-based mobile engagement. So now that you have a bit of a high level on where the location services industry is and where it's going in 2017, and of course I had to get a little bit of information in there about Blue Dot's role in unlocking that growth, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a step back now and tell you a few things that we would recommend that you consider when you're thinking about implementing a location-based engagement strategy. And perhaps you guys have already done some work around this, or perhaps this is the first time you're hearing it. So feel free to shoot a message to us in the chat and um, engage with us about uh, your thoughts on any of this content. And of course, questions are always welcome. So the rules of engagement, we're going to look in the first, uh, first point about that whole customer journey. We're going to analyze what you should be doing to engage your customer throughout their entire path to purchase. We're going to look at micro moments within the location space in our second rule of engagement. Then we're going to take a look and shift gears into precision. Uh, within the almost doesn't count section, looking at how to stay relevant and know your customer, and then this data value exchange. So mining this data value exchange, knowing how and when to engage and to know that sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, and then we will wrap it up with our conversation, you know, on where to go from here. So with that, let's just get right into it. The path to purchase. If you are a marketer that does any sort of work with a brand or in retail, or really if you're selling anything, you want to engage with your customer along that entire path to purchase. The more you know about what they do and where they go and how they think and what they consider before they arrive at your storefront or your website to make that purchase, the stronger your targeting is going to be, the higher your conversions, and the better your ROI. So when you're considering a location-based strategy, it's so easy to right out of the gate think, all right, well, these are my five locations. I'm going to engage with my user right here. But you have to think bigger than that to really maximize location services. You have to think about that entire customer journey. So where does your customer go from the time they view your first advertisement on a desktop to when they see and make a purchase in store? So we recommend that you use location services throughout the entire journey, engaging and collecting analytics along that entire physical and psychological path to purchase. So with the location services platforms like Blue Dot, which include heavy zone enablement and conditioning engines that allow you to follow that path to purchase, we recommend that you engage throughout the entire thing. So setting your relevant locations, not just as your physical locations, but the locations of your competitors by including robust data profiles so you understand and can pay attention to locations that you know matter to your customer. The more you're able to know about this path to purchase, the more you're able to engage with them, the faster this path to purchase is going to be for you and for your customer. Location-based marketing allows you to use location intelligence. That's the whole point of this. So you need to be familiar in using location throughout this entire path to purchase. So you're driving offers, you're driving loyalty, you're collecting analytics, you're really looking at everything your customer could be doing before they make that choice. And more importantly than engaging with them along this path to purchase is collecting the analytics on what they're doing uh, before they make this purchase decision. So you want to be looking and considering location services 
business platforms that are possible, that are, I mean, that are capable of powering this full customer service or this full, full customer journey and this full path to purchase. So you want to be able to have a solution that reaches customers anywhere, that allows you to monetize this engagement, and most importantly, that allows you to really understand the customer behavior that is so crucial um, to making even more effective campaigns as you move forward. Once customers have made their decision that they need a product, brands have a responsibility to provide an experience that allows them to easily take action, such as making the purchase, scheduling the appointment, visiting the location. And location-based marketing provides more relevant and convenient experience within that phase. And that is why it is so important to work from the outside in before you even consider implementing an indoor location strategy. You have to have an outdoor location strategy that allows you to interact with, engage for that uh, with that customer's path to purchase. An example of a brand that is doing a really good job with uh, understanding location in the path to purchase right now is Best Buy. So Best Buy makes it incredibly easy for an on-the-go customer to find and purchase a product by using Google local inventory ads, they display the current inventory at stores that are closest to the user, and then they engage with their users through partnership apps to prompt notifications, mobile payments, and then to allow them to just process the payment while they're in store. It's been an incredibly effective way for letting the customer to choose to buy online, pick up in the store, and let the brand have access to that whole customer journey. So when you're thinking of this customer journey, it's really easy to think about it on the macro level, right? So how do they get to my store? That's my customer journey. They went from interest to purchase, uh, and that's, that's all that really matters. Well, no, that's not all that really matters. In order to unlock location-based data, you have to think big by thinking small. The most impactful customer engagement comes from when the customer and the company have these one-on-one -on -one personalized experiences. So you need to be able to talk to every single one of your customers like you are talking to an old friend. And that means you have to have a solution that provides unlimited locations and unlimited opportunities to have that true one-to-one -one micro moment. So this is talking about taking your location strategy from prompting a mobile uh, notification in the general area of a retailer or maybe a, a coffee company like Starbucks, but to saying, all right, when Emma is directly in front of my store, I want to prompt her a notice that one of her favorite items or an item that she's been looking at has gone on sale. I want to talk to Emma with content that's engaging for her, and I want to do it at the best possible moment. So I don't want to just talk to her when she's on my block and could be standing in front of a competing store. I want to talk to her when she's at the door of my store. I want to understand what movement she makes when she gets there. Or better yet, I want to talk to her when she's thinking about entering a competitor space, and I want to engage with her then. Um, these micro moments are only possible if you're using a, a location service that allows you to get super granular. So these micro moments happen in five meters or less, and they've traditionally been a space that beacons really dominate. But with Blue Dot, you're able to think big by thinking small without the hardware, which is a really incredible innovation. So with Blue Dot, you can use geofences that are up, up to five meters in diameter, so incredibly small. And then you also have the opportunity to engage with your user by using our GeoLine, which is a razor thin piece of technology that you can draw infinitely long or infinitely short. And as soon as your user crosses it, you can collect analytics or prompt that mobile engagement with them. Part of thinking big by thinking small is also thinking about those analytics. So the more micro moments you have, the better off you're going to be when you're setting that customer strategy and figuring out what really matters to your customers. So going hand in hand with this concept of micro moments is relevancy, right? Uh, this sort of gets to the first part of just because you can doesn't mean you should. So just because you know Emma's in front of Sephora, do you really want to use a geoline to draw a uh, to draw a point of engagement with her, or or have you been using location to evaluate her whole path to purchase? And you know that Emma's already made her monthly purchase this month at Sephora. So why would you prompt her a notification for 50% off when you know she's not likely to really shop there and this offer may actually be likely to annoy her or to uh, prompt disengagement with the application? Relevancy matters. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. If you have a customer that is, you know, passing the um, – a store for high-end bottles of wine, but you happen to know that this particular customer of yours um, doesn't drink based on his location data profile. Well, then perhaps you want to uh, condition this a little bit more refined so that you're not prompting something just because you should, but you're prompting engagement because it matters. So prompt that wine coupon um, 
to your wine connoisseur and direct maybe um, your other users to things that actually matter to them. Engaging where it matters and when it matters is the most important thing to unlocking the real power of location. It's the only way you're going to be able to deliver personalization at scale. Because personalization at scale doesn't just speak to, okay, I'm able to deliver this content to you, but it speaks to, I have this piece of content that is relevant to my consumer base that is interested in X, Y, Z activity. But personalization means more than just delivering it to those consumers that are interested, but it's delivering it to those individual consumers at the specific time and specific place where it's gonna have the most impact on that user. So person one gets message one, at X time. Person two gets message one at another time. Person three gets message one at an entirely different location. So this personalization at scale speaks to creating these one-on-one -on -one experiences through the convergence of what you know about your customers, so data profiling, and then using that mi micro location to determine, okay, I know they're interested, but is this relevant for them now? So this is where you're going to want to ask yourself a lot of questions about that path to purchase and really get to understand, okay, my customers buy my store, but what are they actually doing right now? What is their, what's this data telling me about what they're interested? Are they out shopping for their kids' soccer gear or are they interested in seeing this advertisement I have for a luxury handbag right now? You need to pay attention to the micro moments within location, which is really what brings us to this key fact. And if you take anything away from it, this conversation today, I hope this is what you take away. Small patterns tell really big stories. And location is the common key that you need in a lot of different data sets to connect the dots and see previously unseen or unknowable relationships. You can think of location data as the web analytics for the physical space. Analyzing this data and getting down into it is just as important as using the data to interact with your consumers. There is so much you can learn about your consumers from their micro movements and their micro patterns of engagement that can unlock incredible optimization opportunities for you in your mobile marketing and in your consumer engagement strategies. So look, when we're talking about all this information, it's great. You're going to be inundated with different solutions that are going to you know, tell you that they can provide personalization at scale. And we're talking about these micro moments there are multiple companies that say, you know, I can do this for you. I can deliver this either with a beacon or with software, whatever it may be. But the most important thing you need to be considering when you're considering how you're going to power those micro moments are a few things. So everybody knows only in horseshoes and hand grenades does almost count. And it definitely doesn't count in location services where location is a proxy for customer wants and needs. So when you're talking about location services platform, I encourage you to look for solutions that deliver true precision. The more precise you're targeting, the greater the context you have. The greater the context you have, the greater relevancy your engagement is going to have to what that consumer is doing at that moment in time. And in 2017 and beyond, relevant mobile moments are the only mobile moments that are going to matter. You need to engage with that user in that moment of truth and you need to have the right message. You're only going to get one opportunity to deliver that user exactly what they want when they want it and you need to have a solution that's going to be precise. So when you're looking for these precise solutions, you need to look really deep into the testing methodologies. So a lot of companies will say, yes, I can work in an urban space or yes, I can work when there is um, an interesting weather pattern occurring. But you want a solution that even if Blue Dot, Blue Dot can deliver you one centimeter of accuracy, but what good does one centimeter do with you if the precision bounces or if it's really a little bit uh, less precise in different circumstances? With Blue Dot in particular, we test in the most aggressive testing circumstances, so the most uh, condensed urban areas, the most buildings around to test for urban canyoning. We test when signals drop out. We test um you know, in all these different scenarios to make sure that we really can deliver you that one centimeter of accuracy that we guarantee. But precision is one thing, and I apologize, I just misspoke. Precision is one thing and accuracy is another. So I want to take it back to, um, for any of my golfers on the call today, the one thing that any golfer will tell you is that what separates a pro golfer, someone that is truly great, from someone that's just pretty good and is a hobbyist is their ability to not just be good, but their ability to be good to get the ball in the hole over and over and over again under a million different circumstances, under all these different conditions, on different types of terrain. The It's not just the precision. It's not just the ability to get the ball in the hole once, but doing it over and over again. It's the accuracy 
that makes uh, a golfer great. And it's the accuracy that makes a solution great. So one centimeter of precision, what good does that do you if I'm going to give you one centimeter of precision five feet from where you actually wanted to engage? You need to look at solutions that combine precision and accuracy so you're delivering that, that, that precision every single time at the right space every single time. So a great example of solutions that lack uh, accuracy and it's probably frustrated every single person on this call is think about the geofencing tool that Uber uses. So how many times have you called an Uber and they end up on the wrong side of the street or on the wrong block or just a few feet over? Well, that happens because of urban canyoning. In urban uh, scenarios, uh, signals are bounced and your GPS doesn't know where it's going. So you need a solution that filters that out and can get figure out actually where you are by cutting through the noise and being precise and being accurate every single time. The other thing you're going to want to be considering is flexibility, scalability, and versatility. Location is that key. It is that web analytics for the physical space. So you're going to want to be using it across your engagement. You want to not just be using it with one form of customer engagement, you want to be collecting analytics no matter what your customers are up to. So you want a solution that allows you to be versatile in your use cases and that can power many different forms of customer engagement. And you also want a solution that's going to be scalable. If you think of a company like Dunkin' Donuts that has 7,200 locations in the United States, they're not going to be able to get by with a service like Gimbal that can only fence a thousand locations. And you're certainly not going to be able to get by by using the geofencing capabilities that are on iOS and Android uh, native systems. You need something that's truly scalable because you're not talking about just fencing your locations. You want to fence relevant locations. You want to fence entire paths. So you need a truly scalable solution. Um, this is where you're going to run into some issues, scalability and flexibility when it comes to hardware. So obviously there are some severe limitations on where you can roll out hardware, and then there are also just some severe cost limitations to rolling out hardware. And then there are cost limitations to rolling out um, serious numbers of locations across a lot of platforms. With Blue Dot, we provide unlimited flexibility and ultimate scalability. Our last load test was 5 million locations, single user, single device, which means that you can virtually have unlimited locations to engage with your customers on. But you have the flexibility to bring those locations on and offline at any given time without disrupting your ability to engage or collect analytics. Those are going to be really important features for you to look for when you're considering that location service that's right for you. So Blue Dot is a, I promised it wasn't going to be a sales pitch, but I do have to just run you through a few of the features we've got going. So Blue Dot is really capable of powering almost anything you want to do in the location space uh, in 2017 and beyond. We have GeoLines, which are a proprietary piece of technology that are razor thin tripwires. Our geofences are 20 times more accurate than anything on the market. Our zone enablement, we are the only company with it. So zone enablement allows you to condition your engagement on any third party data point. It allows you to sequence the zone. So if this, then that, engage here, and then engage here to allow you to create those true one-to-one -one customer uh, experiences. And then, of course, we are built to be used by enterprises. Our point SDK is a very, very light SDK. We have check-in and check-out features so that you can get those analytics you need. We have dwell time. We have a public API and webhooks that make us very easy for you to use and very easy for enterprises to maximize their location services. We can power virtually everything that is in this growing market. We sit very deep in the tech stack. We sit within the mobile location-based platforms, under clients and brands, under the apps. And if you're working in retail, hospitality, financial services, healthcare, you name it, Blue Dot probably is already powering a use case within that space. Even spaces where it's hard for location to work with them, think financial services and healthcare in particular, Blue Dot's able to work there because privacy is hard-coded into our technology. So when we're talking about knowing where someone is down to one centimeter, it's okay that Blue Dot does because we protect your customer privacy and protect that personally identifying information in a way that most other location services companies frankly do not. So this again just hides, uh, highlights our accuracy. So this is now what you can get on Salesforce Marketing Cloud. You can get these geo lines. You can get this precision of this building. So same building here, but you're getting all this noise if you're using Google, Apple, or Gimbal solutions. With Blue Dot, you can know right when they're entering the door. You can know if they're sitting at this picnic table versus that picnic table, where they are at in the building, when they've entered the park. It allows you to have this engagement that is really meaningful with you meaningful for you. And when you combine it with the power of the Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you have a solution that is really powerful for collecting those analytics and getting some really great insights on your users. 
So some powerful results that you can get from advertising. Just sort of end with this to give you some, all right, yeah, I've given you all these great best practices, but why? Why should you? You know the market's going there. You know that there's trending around it. But still, what is it really going to do for you? Well, if you're an advertiser, I'd ask you to consider this news court case study where they fenced 3,500 locations and saw 270% more revenue per per converted lead and saw a 73 um hundred percent return on ad campaigns like these are unheard of numbers these are massive and what they were able to do was use location-based ad attribution to increase the price of their uh, advertising content it's been an incredibly successful use case that really speaks to what you can do in advertising uh, and mobile advertising to drive customer engagement but also to drive revenue for you and for your company Another solution that's having some really powerful results is the solution we're powering right now for McAllister's Delis, which is a quick serve restaurant um, who is using our solution to understand when a user orders online or they order on their mobile device, they enter the parking lot, they're using us with a series of geo lines to say, all right, Jordan has entered the parking lot, she ordered this, let's start preparing her order, she's fourth car in line, let me double check what she ordered, hand it to her, location-based payment, they're shaving 25 seconds off their drive through time, which for a uh, quick serve restaurant is huge. They operate in the area of one to 2% profit margins. 25 seconds is essentially a yield of 120,000 extra margin dollars every single month. It's a 500% on their return on their investment of their installation. And these are just two of some of the use cases that are most powerful, but we have use cases across verticals and we would be happy to share that with you guys um, if there is interest there. So before I uh, open it up for questions, I just want to open it up uh, to say, you know, where do you go from here? What should you be thinking of next? You now have some information and some tools on how to engage with your customers and what to consider when you're looking at a location services platform, but where do you go from here? So if anything I said has sparked your attention, you can feel free to reach out to me directly, just jordan at blue.innovation. I will shoot all of you guys my contact email when I send around this deck but I'm happy to schedule a demo to walk you through Blue Dot's technology to just give you some advice on what solutions you should be looking at. And then, of course, um, if you are using Salesforce Marketing Cloud, I would really encourage you to subscribe to our other demo, which just uh, our other webinar, excuse me, which walks you through how to use Blue Dot within the Salesforce Marketing Cloud space. And that will be incredibly specific to what you're able to do with the Journey Builder. If you're using another marketing cloud, but you're really interested in Blue Dot, don't worry about that. Blue Dot has partnerships with a number of marketing clouds and integrations already built out with IBM, Cognizant, and Adobe Marketing Cloud, as well as Urban Airship. So if you're on a different marketing cloud, you can still unlock the power of Blue Dot's hyper-precise location services. So with that being said, I will open it up to any questions. All right, so our first question, uh, the question is, what do you mean uh, when you mention that Blue Dot uh, protects customer privacy unlike anyone else? So for Blue Dot, customer privacy is, uh, we are on the Apple side of that debate. We really believe that as customers are willing to share their location data, it shouldn't be something that we're taking advantage of as brands. So with Blue Dot, we've actually hard-coded privacy into our technology so that Blue Dot never has access to any of your customers' personally identifying information. We use military-grade encryption on all of our privately hosted servers. We anonymize and hash the data so we're never able to see you know, anything about that consumer profile. We anonymize it all completely, and Blue Dot only stores anonymized versions of your data. So as far as we're concerned, the relationship is between company X and consumer, not between Blue Dot and the consumer. We just uh, power that location component, collect the data, and give it to its proper owners, which is something very different um, from what you'll see from a lot of people in the location services space. 2016 was a great year for location, but for privacy, you know, a few of the uh, people operating in the space got in a little bit of trouble with the Federal Trade Commission for some tracking they were doing that um, just frankly wasn't legal and that their consumers hadn't consented to. So at Blue Dot, we never want to put our position put ourselves in a position where we are breaking our consumers or our brand's trust. So if you're using us, you can trust that your consumer data will be completely protected, which is why companies like Citibank uh, have trusted us to process those financial institutions for their clients and keep their clients' data safe. What else do we have here? All right, the question is, you mentioned the zone enablement feature. Can you please explain what that is? 
So when I'm talking about the customer journey and this entire path to purchase, a lot of solutions will only let you interact at one geofence area at a time. So with Blue Dot's conditioning engine and our zone enablement, what we enable you to do is sync up multiple geofences into a single consolidated zone. So imagine geofences that are uh, you know, every five meters as you're walking down a city street and around the block. So you're able to say, all right, Jordan gets off the bus stop here. This is one geofence. I'm going to engage with her in this way here. I'm going to put another geofence at the crosswalk a block down the way. When she enters that geofence, I'm going to give her another engagement. And I'm going to follow her entire path to purchase. So it allows you to see the full customer journey instead of having to look at individual locations. It also allows you to sequence your engagement, to do some motion profiling, understand how your customers are getting there. It's a very powerful tool um, for customer engagement. Okay, the next question. Um, beacons in an indoor space, is there any way to avoid them? So unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Uh, Blue Dot's platform is beacon agnostic. Um, we were built recognizing and conceding that in very deep indoor locations, so think about basements or maybe a second layer of a conference center, you need to have some indoor beaconing. Um, and so what Blue Dot does is we seamlessly ingest those beacons into our space and bridge that gap between outdoor and indoor for you um, pretty effectively. Um, if a solution is telling you that they have a software only way to prompt in deep indoor notifications, it's simply not telling the truth. Now in the beacon space, there's a lot of confusion. There are good beacons, there are bad beacons, and there are beacon providers that will tell you you need 50 beacons when in fact you need four. Those are um, areas that need improvement within the beacon space, but uh, right now as the market stands, you do need a beacon if you're using a very deep indoor engagement or if you want to know something incredibly granular, like you want to know um, when somebody's standing in front of the milk in that indoor space, then yes, you would need a beacon for that. But you wouldn't need to know when they're standing at the door or if they're in a light indoor space in a building that Blue Dot can power and that is going to be software free. So about 80% um, of the time, you're not going to need a beacon. Only 20% of the time, if you're looking to do in aisle engagement or something like that, will you need a beacon. All right, well, it looks like everybody appears to be good on questions. Um, if you guys have any more, feel free to shoot me an email after this. I will be circulating this deck around to you guys um, for your use and distribution, and we are happy to answer any questions you have um, after the call. So if that is it, I will um, let you guys get back to your day. I thank you all for joining the conversation, and have a great rest of your week.